Now we'll say some things about reading and interpreting graphs. Graphs show up everywhere. If you look in the in the newspaper, you might see a graph of how much money the county is spending to do this or that every month, and it'll 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 change over time, and you'll see that shown on the graph. Or you might look at the the financial page in the newspaper and see a stock price going up or going down, and you see how the price of the stock is changing over time. Being able to understand the graph. Being, being able to look at it and see the meaning that the author intended is a very important skill to have because graphs show up everywhere in medicine, in engineering, in economics. All different fields make use of graphs to display information in a, in a clear and concise and efficient manner. So being able to understand a graph is important. So we're just going to look at several examples here. Many things are graphed over time. That means as time goes on, something is changing, and the graph shows us specifically how it's changing as time goes on. For example, the air temperature changes over the course of a day. So let's put 6 a.m. down here, and we'll put noon here and 6 p.m. So this is time on our horizontal axis, and this will be the temperature here. And we won't put numbers on here, but typically noon is the, the point in the day when the sun is the highest but the sun shining on the land for extended time is what makes it warmer so even after noon it's continuing to heat up so the the peak heat usually comes in mid-afternoon so the temperature might rise over the course of the day and reach a peak and then start to cool off later in the day so a graph of air temperature over the time and of course that'll be different in different cities and different seasons but you would expect it to go up and then down and that shows you that as time moves forward the temperature goes up and then down and you could see on this graph specifically what the temperature was at various times if you had accurate numbers on there let's look at another example the tides go up and down over the course of the day so I grew up on the coast and the tides typically go up and down up about every 12 hours a little more than every 12 hours so if this is midnight and 6 a.m. and noon the next day and 6 p.m. so again we have time here and this would be the height of the water it would go up and down up and down something like this okay and the, the interval here from one peak to the next would be a little over 12 hours in time. And you could see from this graph, if you wanted to know, okay, at 3 p.m. right there, 3 p.m. corresponds to this point on the graph, and that corresponds to a specific height. You could see the water height at any given time. Okay, here's another example. Government debt almost always increases over time. The United States government spends almost every year more money than they take in, and, and the amount grows just it's incredible. The, over time, the debt growth looks like this. It just gets faster and faster. And, um, and in 2008, for example, the debt reached a level of over $9 trillion. And I'm just going to write a capital T, because that's almost too many zeros to write. Let's see, that's 9 thousand million billion trillion dollars it's a huge number and it's growing it's getting bigger faster and that's a problem but you can see the problem and you can see how fast it's growing by looking at this graph now take note that not every graph has time on the horizontal axis here's another example pressure depends on temperature if you have if you have a container and let's say there's some gas in it some air any kind of gas not gasoline like you run in a car but I mean gas as in not a liquid and not a solid and I'll draw these little atoms these are these dots represent individual atoms in reality there would be billions and billions of these too tiny to see what happens if you heat this up say you put a little burner under here here's a little gas line coming in and some flames burning there so you're heating this container up. So the gas inside increases in temperature. It turns out that at the molecular level, 
what heat is is the vibration of the atoms heating it up causes all these atoms in here to move faster and they're flying around and they're bouncing off of each other and they're striking the walls of this container and when they when they strike the walls of the container they exert a force they push out on the walls of that container this gas is trapped in the container think of this compressed air or some compressed gas in the container and when you heat it up that makes that agitates all of those atoms they move faster and they strike the walls of the container harder and that force of the atom striking the container is called a pressure when you have a force distributed over an area like this that's pressure so heating it up causes the atoms to move faster and bang away harder and that increases the pressure so pressure increases with temperature and you can make a graph of that you could put pressure on one axis and temperature on another and it would go up something like this the pressure would get greater as the temperature would get gets greater so at a certain temperature you have a certain pressure at a higher temperature this point on the graph corresponds to a higher pressure so those are just some examples of graphs and being able to see how the graph shows how one thing changes relative to another and a lot of things change over time not everything but a lot of things change over time and specifically now we're talking about motion which involves the position of an object changing over time but even if you're not talking about motion graphs are going to show up all the time the rest of your life and being able to understand them is important